The legs can also move out just in case this happens. So yeah, you can move them out. Just to slightly fix the feet issues. But and also since the one of the arms are just like on the ground, like the uh, Clover Source from 2020 or November of 2019, technically, and I can stand on four legs a lot better. Although technically, it isn't standing on four legs. Jesus, um, arm is just yeah. I don't know why it's like that. I think it would be better if they had it all the arms like like that, like just like this one. Well, the arm like this one. Because you cannot get it into a bipedal pose at all. Even if the foot wasn't messed up, this is the closest you're gonna get. You can't move the head. You, you cannot move the head down just because the weird way it the neck is. Which is probably why they changed it. So the neck is just like pointing straight up, um, which is pretty nice. Kind of just like the counter torus, kind of. I don't know any other examples really. I guess the Allosaurus, but that the um, you can't move the neck on that one. Of course, the action feature, well, one of them is that you can press this down, and this guy just bobs its head up and down, which is pretty funny. I like that. Um, the tail can also move if you press this button, J just like all the other dual attack ones. It's kind of stupid. I don't know why anyone really likes to dual attacks over the, um, uh, what is it, uh, sound strike, sound strike. Because I say, oh, the sound strike ones all have, like, the same action features. Well, so does this. Like, look, like, concavenator, biting action, tail swapping action, <laughs> tail surface, head butting action, tail swiping action, triceratops, do 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 um, Head bopping action, tail swiping action. One of the only ones I think that has a different action feature that is a um, terrestrial um, animal, because of the on of course, is a flying animal, so it doesn't really have a tail to do anything with. It's Allosaurus. Biting action. And this. I like that. I like the Battle at Big Rock Allosaurus, just for having that little action feature. I might do a review on this one eventually. And fly away too. So, on to the issues about this figure. One, like I said, the printing is terrible sometimes. The spray paint also ends up being terrible. Um, the colors, although I said they were good, I think the yellow is kind of too bright. I think if they toned it down just a tiny bit, it would be a little bit better. Also, the claws all painted. Not. The Cryolophosaurus has the same problem. Um, I mean, it isn't a big deal on either one. Because, I mean, you're not going to, like, have to worry about the feet being, like, have to, like, look at the feet from under unless you're scanning it. Not that anyone does that anymore. It's probably why um, Jurassic World Fats hasn't got an update yet. <laughs> Since, um, I think last month, I think, with the videos, which is a pretty useless feature. The eye is also literally the laziest thing ever. It's literally just like a black circle with a hole in the middle, so you just... Yeah, doesn't even have an actual eye color. I mean, neither does the Triceratops, but, I mean, at least it has some color to it. I kind of like it when they give the dinosaurs an actual eye color. Like the T-Rex, it has like a eye, <laughs> an actual pupil, instead of just having a hollow circle, so you can just see the color um, as an eye. Does the source have the same thing? Yes, it does. T-Rex has a yellow eye and a black pupil. People say, oh, it's cartoony. Well, I mean, kind of. I mean, people say this T-Rex is cartoony. Why? Anyways, um, this is Parasaurus review, isn't it? Um, the feet. Yes, the feet. It's terrible. Just 100% just bad. Um, like the Allosaurus feet from 2018. Um, they're pretty sturdy. Pretty sturdy feet. You can, like, sort of bend them. 
there with all my force. With all my Conator's force, I can mildly bend them. But even then, they just go back to their original position. You need, like, a lot of force to move them. Concavenated feet. You can bend that one way more. And this one... Just, you, you can just... In the parasol office, it might be because I'm, I was constantly trying to bend the feet back. See if I can get a good angle of this. I'm applying the same force I was with the Allosaurus, and this this guy's feet just move. They like to move it, move it. They like to move it, move it. And then, you end up getting this. This is why you don't put your toys in a toy box, kids. You just leave them outside and you end up having that. Um... So, what do I think of the parasol office? Um... I mean, it's the first parasol. It was the first parasol office since the Kenner Lost World parasol office, and that one wasn't really the best either, if I gotta be honest. But at least it can go into a bipedal pose. This one can't even stand most of the time. It is a very bad figure, and it was originally in a, a Walmart exclusive, but then they had them at Target for some reason. Yep, can't stand. I can't stand that, can't stand. Dude, dude, dude. Hello everyone, this is Tosicano, and it's another review today. This uh, time it's the Parasol Office. Not the 2020 one, I don't have that one yet. And I'm surprised this one's standing. The Parasol Office is a very bad figure, if I gotta be honest. There's so many problems wrong with it, and you can see. That the feet is one of them. That too. So, this is one of the dual attacks um, from 2019. The Parasol Office, uh, I think, was part of Wave 1. And surprisingly, it is a very rare figure. It goes for like at, at least $60 on eBay. I've seen some for like 150 I don't know how anyone would pay even forty dollars for this. Yes, I definitely wouldn't. Well, let's start uh, talking about the good stuff. The colorings are definitely really good, and I think are actually slightly better than the twenty twenty one. Um, but I I kind of like the pink on the parasol for Soundstrike one. It kind of looks cool. I like how this one has like spray painted uh, red on the head, like the like the Bloss World one, and right here. I also like how the white is spray painted, uh, like the top, instead of being printed. But that causes this. But on the like on the main underbelly, it that really looks pretty nice. I wish I would kind of just, you know, like, go all the way through the tail, but, you know, this is Mattel, they just, you know, they just cut costs. Cut corners, I mean. Same thing. I th I'm pretty sure all the stripes are printed on, though. Um, because these look printed on. What even is this? It was just like a, just like, just like a cut-off bit right here, a cut-off bit right here, right here. Just terrible. And then because the tail and this tail, this part of the tail and this part of the tail are two different pieces, the stripe doesn't line up. On this side, it's slightly better. Um, kind of. I think this side is actually pretty decent. This side definitely isn't. There's a bunch of printing errors and just... All around bad, and because it's printed on some parts of the print didn't go on the actual figure, you need some spots missing. I don't know if this whole spot is supposed to be missing. I'm assuming it is, but there's some some more pieces missing. It's also, it also has a, like a weird texture on top of it. It's all like pebbly. It's kind of weird. Um, these arms were also used for the 2020 Parasaur Office, 
which is pretty nice. I kind of like these ones. I think the head was also reused. The neck looks really weird, if I gotta be honest. It's kind of like the Jurassic World, the game Spinosaur, so the neck just looks like it should be like this instead of this, because it just leaves a giant gap of the head. It just looks very odd. The crest is also um, painted in a brown color. I forgot to mention that. It's pretty nice. If we gotta be honest. So overall, um, it, it, this is a very bad figure. It might just be my parasol office that have messed up feet. But even then, it's still a bad fed figure. No sounds, of course. Um, probably because it'd be cheaper for Mattel to just have no sounds on these. I don't know why you're still paying $15 for, for them. I mean... You're paying $15 for the Roar of Wars, Sound Strikes, and Dual Attacks. Roar of Wars have sounds, but no articulation for the most part. Uh, dual Attacks have no sound. Did I say Roar of Wars have no sounds? Oh, God damn it! I can't speak. Um, dual Attacks have no sounds, and just two action features. Sound Strikes have two, two like, sort of action features, or even three if you count the quote-unquote head strike thing. And sounds, so overall, sound strikes are just the best out of all of them. And speaking of best out of all of them, this is the worst of all the Parasaur offices. I mean, this one doesn't make sounds, uh, it just looks weird, and it just can't even go into a bipedal pose that the Kenner and the 2020 Mattel one can do. This one, like I said, it's terrible. Go down there. Probably just ruining the value of this even more than it already is ruined. Eh, not that I'm gonna sell it on eBay or anything. So yeah, just, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that some of the newer dual attacks are still being sold in stores. Like the blue triceratops. I'm pretty sure they were, they were supposed to be like a brown triceratops. But like, that never got released because Mintel just, I don't know, still focused on the... 2020 ones. I mean, I guess we already got enough Triceratops. We have one, two, three, four, five. I think. So, six. So we have the World of War one, two battle damages, two dual attacks, and two sound strikes. No, seven actually. Wow. That is a lot. And technically, it would be eight. Actually, I mean, I guess you can count the two mini ones, the JP one and just the green one. But that's kind of off topic, isn't it? So basically, just don't get the Parasaur Office off of eBay for like $100, new in box. I don't even think there's any used. Yeah, just don't spend $100 on it. Spend like 40 to $30 on a, on a Kenner one. And don't spend $40 on a Soundstrike Parasaur Overseer. Just wait for it to go in stores for like 20